Welcome everyone to the first Forza Horizon 3 video. This video is really all about just getting started. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the game overall, what is it, and then a couple of the main menus that you're going to use to get around and find things. So let's first start by talking a little bit about Forza Horizon 3, what it is and what it isn't. So if you're familiar with the Forza series, you know that there are two distinct versions of Forza games. There's the Forza Motorsport brand, which focuses on circuit racing. This is your standard racing type game. This is where you're, you're looking at purpose-built race cars that are on race tracks that are purpose-built for that. The Forza Horizon series is a whole different ball game. You do have uh, a lot of the same cars on this particular uh, game that you will find on the Forza Motorsport series, but this is more geared toward street racing, off-road, you know, rally type stuff, drifting, all of that type of thing. This is more of a social experiment for the Forza Horizon series. So the Forza Horizon is all about having fun, whereas the Forza Motorsport, while obviously it's very fun, particularly to those of us who are racing sim fans, the Forza Horizon series is all about uh, really connecting with your friends and having a good time. But what I will say about this particular game that I'm finding is that it is a blast to play just by yourself. So I think they've really found a good mix with this particular game. So let's go ahead and get started with the menus. There are two menus you're going to see. First is the menu when you're actually at a Horizon Festival site. And we're going to look at the map here in just a, a few moments. But, but whenever you're at a Forza horizon festival site the the festival site think of it as the the main place that you're going to visit to to find new races and new things to do it's also the location where your cars are going to be located so if you want to swap out cars what you're seeing on the screen right now is a dodge viper that is part of my garage and it's the car that i'm currently driving but if I want to swap out, let's say I want to drive a different type of race car, then I can do that. I just go to a Horizon Festival site, go to my garage, and do that. And again, we're going to look at that here in just a second. The other menu that you're going to have is your basic menu. I call it the pause menu. The menu that anywhere in the world while you're driving around, you can hit the pause button. Again, it's not technically a pause button, but I, I feel like that's the easiest way to describe it you can hit a button and bring up a menu that's going to allow you to do certain things there as well. So let's get started with the Horizon Festival site menu, which is what you see on the screen here. You've got three options across the top. You've got your auto show, garage, and auction house. Let's start with the auto show. So the Horizon recommends that's highlighted now, as you can see as I move the highlighter around. The Horizon recommends is a screen that's going to, Horizon is going to try to say, hey, based on what you've already driven so far, here's what we think you would like to buy next. What kind of car we think you would like to buy next. So they're going to show you those things. All right, view all is just the opposite. That's where you can look at any and every car that's in the game that you have access to. So if you bought the DLC and the various car packs, then those will be included as well. So view all will allow you to purchase whatever car it is that you're interested in. Okay, Forza Vista is going to allow you to do some things with upgrades on the cars. We're going to look at the upgrades in, in a different uh, video entirely, so we won't go into in depth there. But uh, trending, again, that's this is all things related to cars that you can buy, look at, and upgrades for these things. You can see an option here for the DLC cars, upgrades, and, and so forth. So let's move on to, if you're interested in buying a car, Auto Show is where you want to be. The Garage tab, this is where you're going to see, as the name would suggest on the middle option here, My Cars, the cars that you have. So if you want to look at the cars, let's take a look at the cars that I have right now. Uh, the first is the Dodge Viper. This is the Horizon Edition. I actually got this one for, as part of a level-up spin. 
which again, we'll go into in a different video uh, about leveling. But these are the different cars. And several of these I have because they were given to me free as part of the progression of the storyline. So these are the cars that I have right now. And again, I've only paid for, I think, two of these, really. Maybe even just one. Uh, I purchased the Ford GT here recently. But other than that, uh, that actually may be the only one I've actually purchased out of this entire group. So you can see the game is going to, it's all about having experiences with different types of cars. Whatever car you want to drive, you can do so. But it want to make the game wants to make sure that you have the ability to experience various different types of cars. Whether you're looking at supercars or you're looking at old school cars, the classic muscle is what they call this, you know, modern day supercars, off-roading, you know, you get the idea. Pretty much anything you can imagine, you know, even something as, as awesome as the Rally Fighter here, which is definitely an off-road, and you can see it's under the class of extreme off-road. So there are all sorts of cars to purchase. I think it's well over 300, I think, in the game overall. But even more than that, so you've got your cars. You can also do upgrades. And again, we're going to do a separate video on that. But just very quickly, there is an auto upgrade function, which will take a car and you can say, hey, I want this car to be the max it can possibly be. Give me all the performance you can give me or you can suit it best suit it for any particular class all the way up through supercars, all the way down through its current class. So there's lots of things you can do there and there'll be separate videos for that. Uh, you can tune on the cars. This is where you're going to use the setups. This is where you're going to set your tire pressures. And you can see you got gearing and all sorts of stuff that you're used to seeing, from, particularly from the Forza Motorsport series. So you can do the same type things here. You've got barn finds. These are cars that will appear across the map. And again, there will be uh, separate videos for these as well. But you're going to have cars that, that you have to actually explore the map. They'll give you... A, a defined area that, that we'll see on the map here in just a few minutes that they're going to say, hey, there's a car over here, and they'll they'll periodically uh, tell you about these. Hey, if you'll go look over in this area, there's rumor that there is a, a car that's been basically sitting and rotting in a, in a barn for uh, any number of years, and you're, you're tasked with going to find it, which can be frustrating at times, but you're tasked with going to find it, and then once you find it, then it'll take a little while in the game, but uh, it'll be restored for you, and then it'll be available to you to drive around. There are other things you can do. You can look at different uh, designs and paint schemes for any of the cars you own, and you can download those. So if you're somebody who loves to paint and design uh, the look of a race car, then you can do that here and upload your designs for everyone uh, to download. You've also got license plate. As you can see, I've used the Knee Pit Gaming license plate, uh, but you can you can go through here and you've got numbers and letters to choose as you know as you would like there. And there are even car horns that you can various different car horns from your basics that you hear on the road to all sorts of different musical tones that you can unlock in various ways in the games. And then there are also different sound effects that you can that you can get. Again, the game will give you options to do these, or you can use, you can see at the bottom of the screen, purchase the car horn accelerator. So you've got a whole lot of different options going on there. Auction house. This is a way that if you've got cars that are in your garage that you know you don't want, you don't need, then you have the ability to choose these to put these up for auction or you can come in here and purchase a car maybe you want to get a car that uh, that's a rare car which you can see an option for here let's go ahead and and see what some of these are this is generally where you're going to see the horizon edition cars that you can only get through spins or maybe winning a certain type of race or a certain type of championship or whatever the case may be so that you're going to find those in here and you can see the the current bid for the car and also if you just want to buy it now there's a certain amount there 
So you get the idea. If you want to purchase cars, this is where you're going to go if you want to purchase a car from another player because all of these are from other players. So I could take one of my cars and put it up for auction as well. So that's going to do it for the festival site menu. So let's let's back out of here. Okay, so now we're in the car. We could drive around, do whatever it is we want to do. But for now, let's take a look at our second menu, which I'm calling the pause menu. First things first here, and this is where I spend a lot of my time, is on the world map from the home screen. Let's go ahead and load up the map. And let's just look around and see what we've got. Now, this is your first festival site. So if you wanted to get to the menu we were just in, the festival site menu where you can go to your garage, swap out cars, buy new cars, that type of thing. This is where you're going to go. You're going to go to to a place where you see one of these. You're going to click on it and you can set a route to it. As you can see down in the bottom left hand portion of the scene, it's saying press enter to set a route. I'm playing this on PC, so you'll see a lot of PC type uh, directions here. Okay, so if I want to set a route here, I click on that and you can see the blue marker that's now saying, hey, from where you are, which is up to the top portion of the map, we're going to set this so you'll have directions on how to get here for the festival. Now, so as we move around, you can see I've unlocked a second festival, which is here. This is where we're currently located on the map. So I haven't gotten very far into the game at all, but I wanted to go ahead. I've done enough that I want to give you guys a basic idea of of what the menus are and sort of how to navigate your way around. Most of the area you see out here, you can drive on or drive through. Not just the roads, but you can go off-roading as well. Uh, as we know, the quickest way to get from point A to point B is as the, the crow flies. So it basically means in a straight line. So if you wanted to get from here over to this area, now you could follow the roads all the way over or you can try to take shortcuts as much as you possibly can. There are some areas that you can't go through uh, where there's sort of the invisible walls or there's you know rock formations or whatever the case may be to keep you out of there. But for a lot of this map, you can simply go pretty straight there if you want to go off-roading, which could be a lot of fun. So you can see there are several things across the map. There are speed traps. And again, the, the game will explain these to you, but speed traps, basically it's a speed camera. Uh, and as far as, as how it works is you just drive by it as fast as you can. And that's what it does. It, it registers your time and the faster the time, the more credits and XP and, and different things you will get from that. Uh, you can also see races that are on the, that'll be located on the map here. These are in grayer ones I've already done. Uh, but you can definitely go back to them again, for sure. And some of these I definitely will be going back to. I've run multiple times already because they're lots of fun. So the ones in gray are the ones I've done already. So you can see lots going on on the map. There are various what they call PR stunts uh, to gain fans as well as XP and credits. But as we move across the map, you're going to see a few things. Okay, we see this circle over here that's a barn find they've told me that hey there is a there's a car over here that's located and basically riding away in a barn once you go find it we'll restore it for you and then you can drive it it'll be in your uh, as part of your car collection in your garage so it's telling me somewhere in this area there is a garage or a shed that contains a car for you to to find and add to your collection so i'm they're not telling me exactly where it is so my task is to go and find that. And again, we'll be doing some videos on those. You can see here, here's an undiscovered PR stunt. So I've only been to these two areas. I've been, this is where you start, down in the bottom right-hand portion here. And then as I have moved up, this was the second location that I unlocked. And you can see over here, there's another circle. And what they've done is... This is an area that we're going to get to here in just a moment where you talk about adding your friends to your uh, drive guitar lineup. Well, basically the game come up and told me, hey, there is a person over here that you might want to add to your drive guitar lineup. And just as with the barn finds, here's how you can get to them. 
they're somewhere around this area. So I'm tasked with, if I want to, and you don't have to do any of these things, you could basically just drive around the entire map all the time and never do anything other than what you want to, and you'll be just fine. It can be a lot of fun. But if I want to find this person and add them to my Drivatar lineup, I have to go here, find them on the road, and then challenge them to a race. If I beat them, I'll have the option to add them. So as you can see, lots more to do on this map that I have not uncovered. I'm particularly excited about getting over in this area, as well as you can see over in the rainforest area. So lots of different terrains to cover there. You could spend all day on that. Uh, but let's move on to some other things. You can see an option here if you want to upgrade your, your Horizon membership. Definitely don't want to do that. All right, online adventure mode. So if I click here, it's going to ask, do you want the standard adventure that they've designed for you, or do you just want a custom adventure? An adventure is, if you do the standard adventure, they're going to set up various different events and races for you to attend, and they're going to take care of all that for you. They're going to take you from one event or race to the next, and you won't have to worry about doing any of it. Custom means that you can decide on your own which ones you want to do. Settings, this is where you're going to see, you're going to set your difficulty level, your controls, various things like this, the, uh, the audio and video, that type of thing. Okay, so all that's located within this map. Uh, you can set up a group. This is particularly useful if you want to go online. Photo mode, which is great for taking screenshots uh, and for different photographs for posting. And then you've got drone mode. Let's take a quick look at drone mode. Drone mode is, think of it as racing with a drone. So I've got the ability to rotate this flying drone around. Again, great for screenshots. And I can go around the world like this. If I press the turbo button, then I simply am going to go a lot faster. So this gives you the ability to explore the world without actually having to drive through it. Now, you might say, well, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, if you want to get somewhere fairly quickly and you want to keep your car, if you want to say you want to see the map, but you don't necessarily want to take your car over there because, you know, you're uh, going to be doing a race that's pretty close to where your car is located now, but you really want to see what's over in this certain area, then do it with the drone mode. That way your car doesn't move locations. But as I mentioned, the, the primary reason for this, of course, is the screenshots. And if you just want to check out how beautiful this world really is, then this is a great way of doing it. I'm playing at 1080p. Uh, I can only imagine what this thing would look like at 4K resolution. So if you want to fly around the entire world, areas that you've explored, haven't explored, all of those things can be done through the drone mode. And that's something brand new to the series. Okay, let's move on to the second tab in our menu, the social. This is where you're going to go online. This is, as you can see, you there's an online free roam, and that's basically just you join a server, and you drive around amongst all of the other people that are online with no particular agenda. If you just want to hang out, and that's the place for you. Co-op campaign, something new here. If, if you would like to have other people while you're doing what would normally be the solo missions, you can actually have people join you to do those. You can either join an online session where you'll meet up with, with people online, or you can join with friends and create your own session and do the races that way. There's also an option to create a private session where you get to determine who's in there and only in there. You've got various messages uh, and community news. So you can see a lot going on socially for this game. You can buy and sell cars with each other. You can meet up and race online with each other, just hang out online, whatever the case may be. Let's move on to the next tab, which is cars. Now you can see it says go to the auto show. Now if I click on this, then it's gonna say, do you wanna fast travel to the nearest festival site? Now that costs credits to do that. So obviously your best bet if you wanna keep all your credits is to say, no, I don't wanna do that. I'll just drive there myself. Okay, so you can tune on the car again. These things uh, we've seen before, but they're giving you another option to let you know, hey, this is where you do these particular options. My Rivals. 
This is something that you could actually spend all of your time doing just simply on rivals. Rivals are things that you'll get these recommendations and these are various races that you can do against a competitor and earn XP and things like that. So it's there are things to sort of get you moving around the world and get you doing different different things. Festival route rivals. Now, as you can see, I've only unlocked two locations so far on the map, but let's say I wanted to drive around the first section, which was Byron Bay. All right, as I scroll through here, you can see there are different types of races from your standard circuit races to your point-to-point -point races, as you see there, all sorts of different lengths and types of racing that I can choose from very short to very long. And I can choose to, let's say I want to do this one, I can choose which class I want to use, which class of car. Do I want to use the most basic cars, your everyday driving cars, or more performance oriented all the way up to the supercars. So you can drive any of these things, any of these types of tra uh, tracks and, and events with any of the types of cars. So you can see lots and lots of possibilities. If you go to Surface Paradise, again, same type things, lots and lots of options for different types of races that you can do. Some on road, some off road. And then you've got various things that they're going to put uh, showcase, uh, which there are several of in the game. Again, try to beat your best time, try to beat community best times, all things that you can do within the game. All right, so let's move on to the community tab. Again, you see the paint jobs show up here. You can create various vinyl groups, and those are you know, various ways of designing your car. Tune your setups. Look at the photos you've already gotten. Look at your particular storefront. So this is where it's going to show, okay, how many setups have you shared for particular cars? How many designs, how many uh, vinyls have you created, which are sets of designs? And then how many photos? This is all thing, these are all things that you have shared with the community. And you can see how many times they've been downloaded and, and all sorts of things like that. So if you're really into sharing setups and cars and all sorts of things, then that could be right up your alley. You can also follow different players that upload things that you find interesting. Uh, visit the Forza Hub. I definitely recommend doing this because from time to time they will give you free credits. So definitely don't want to miss out on that. Let's take a look at the progress tab. Now, progress tab is all about what all you've done within the game itself. How far within the story have you gotten? And so on. So let's look at the Drivatar lineup. This is something that, as you're as we saw on the map while ago, it said, okay, go find this person. And if you challenge them and defeat them in a race, then you can add them to your Drivatar lineup. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, you can see here. I have two people on my Drivatar lineup right now currently. And the first person is a very good friend of mine. The second person is, this is actually my son, my oldest son, who is also playing the game. So the reason to add these folks is because as they earn XP, you will get additional XP as well. So, and I've found that so far, it's adding people from your friends list is who it tries to do first. So both of these people are from my friends list and it's a good way to help you uh, connect with other people, see how they're doing in the game, how they're progressing, what level they've reached, all that kind of thing, as well as have the ability to earn some extra XP as they progress through the game as well. Uh, wheel spins, I don't have any wheel spins right now, but as you level up, you get the opportunity to earn additional XP or, as I showed you earlier in the video, the Dodge Viper, that actually came from a wheel spin. Next up is the skill shop. Now, this is where, as you earn skill points for doing things like uh, destroying things around the world as you're driving or uh, awesome drifting or clean racing, you, know, you name it. Anything that you do around the game basically will earn you points. Once you have a certain number of points and you've uh, reached the next level, it will give you an available point. So you start out here by unlocking drone mode. 
And then you have the option to move around and get various uh, options to either get you more credits when you do certain things, as you can see a couple of those here. You can get additional XP that you can unlock from the different skills. So you can see there are any number of different ways that you can play within the game. And depending on how you play it, will determine which ones of these you want to unlock. Now, what I wanted to unlock were ways to get more credits. So that's what I spent my time on. You can also use instant rewards, which will give you, as you can see with this first option, it gave me 25,000 credits just for spending my point there. Another one will give me 15,000 and so on. So you can use the skill shop to benefit more from the way you choose to play the game. Okay, bucket list. There are various different things, as you can see within the game. Looks like there are a total of 30 of these located throughout the world. And that's where you go to a certain location. It will, it will give you a mission, either earn you know, a certain amount of XP in a certain amount of time, or go from point A to point B as fast as you can. You know, different things like that in different cars. So this is how they not only try to get you to go different areas within the game, but they also give you the opportunity to drive different cars that you may not have enough credits to purchase just yet. And then, of course, you've got your your various stats. How many races have you done? How many have you won? How many times? How much time have you spent in the game? All this type of thing is all located on there. And you see, as you can see, you've got various different stats. For those of you who like uh, Steam achievements, things like that then that's what you're that's the place you're want to going to want to go for those and you can see your achievements as well now your marketplace this is where obviously you can go and purchase various car passes individual cars you know an upgraded vip membership which enables you to gain xp and credits faster so as you can see you've got two menus that give you a whole lot of information available to you. And this is gonna help you navigate throughout the game. One other thing that you'll have is, if you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, Anna. Anna is the navigation. Okay, and pressing down on the D-pad, I can ask Anna, okay, you know, what should I do? And she'll throw out hints for various things that you can do within the game. Set the route to the nearest, I want to do a race, I want to do a stunt location, bucket list, and so on. If you're in need of, if you're really trying to unlock additional events and locations, you say, look, I need I need more fans so I can do that. Okay? You can she can help you find those. Start matchmaking. If you're looking at going online, then then there's a great option for that as well. So the game really tries to help you out within the menus themselves to get to where you want to go it's just a matter of determining which menu you need to be on and when you need to be there and where in the world you need to be for that so hopefully this has helped explain what some of the options are within the game how you can get from point a to point b and how there are things within the game that can really help you do that as efficiently as possible again hope you've enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more Forza Horizon 3.